Our truck is doing a photo shoot today with my daughter and her photographer. <laughs> Another beautiful, smoky California day. Well, it's smoky, but it's covering that 105 degree heat. It's, supposed to it's the video you all been waiting for. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna get our our decals on our truck today. Get the pre-pass in and the uh, the ELD over there. And um, I figured, why not? Let's uh, let's finally get this video done going into the specs of this beautiful truck right here. So stay tuned and we're gonna dive into those specs here in just a little bit. Such precision. Check right, except that. What'd you do? Nothing. It's fine. All right, so I wanted to address something for some people, some of our audience. So in one of our previous videos, there was a scene, an opening scene almost, where Martin was driving and holding the phone because he did not believe when I told him what the rate was, he had to see it with his own eyes. Okay, yes, we know that driving and holding your phone is bad we know this martin is a bad will, boy will never do it again no and if he does i'm gonna cut his hands off she will too i don't really do that though i don't i was just tired and i was like there's no way they're screwing us and like seriously like he had the phone in his hands for 23 seconds i counted and technically even less if you count the amount of time that he's actually looking at the road. So I'm not saying it's right. We know it's not right, but y'all, y'all don't need to keep telling us. We know we get it. Okay. All right. We're good. That's the fancy one that works everywhere. Cause believe it or not in North Carolina, if you don't have the elite, it won't work. Not that we're going there, but you have to have the elite pass, which is the big sucker for some States or they just don't work. So, these guys, these are super easy to install. You just have to have the right harness. Because if you don't have the right harness, especially if you have a Cascadia, you can make this work. Because I've made this work and I've repin these in our old trucks before that we used to have. But it just, they're, they can be finicky. And, and that transition year in those body styles on those Cascadias, when they went to the new style from the old style, then you had the, you had the old style, then you had the, New style, which is like a P3. There are so many different harnesses for those trucks. It's ridiculous. On Packers, for the most part, on these trucks, it's like this. It's a black harness. So all you do is this plugs into your existing OBD2 port. This is your piggyback that you put back in for your diagnostics. And you have all this wire here. Just zip tie it out of the way. It's, it's not used. It might be used with some fleets when they want to do performance monitoring and other stuff, but this is all you do is it's just plug and play it. Plugs in, this is your OBD2 port, then you just run it under your dash, and this plugs into your actual Omnitrax. It's very simple to install. Who's dying to learn how to install an ELD in their truck? Anybody? Anybody? 
Well, if you're not, just fast forward. But if you are, we'll show you. Because this is where the original mount is. I just have to replace this. So, is it down here? But then it's no, in the it's way. gonna be my knees. Then I'm all right there. It's well, my knees too, because it's not like I'm the only one driving. Feels like it. <laughs> so, well, it's gonna be on vacation. All we're gonna do down here is connect this guy to this guy, and then this guy is gonna go right there. OBD2 plug that's piggyback. Here's our original OBD2. This is the ELD wiring. Not much room under here. I zip tied that just so it stays there. And these, you can't see those bolts. They're a pain I'm about to get to, but these won't come out. This whole panel should drop down, but it's giving me trouble. So I was able to finagle it. It's kind of out of the way. Sorry about the crappy angle, but that whole deal right there is my fuse panel. So I want to be able to just have access to that. And I, I, I do, and as you can see, it doesn't look terrible. You can't see it. Like anybody's gonna be looking at it from underneath there, so we're good to go. Now we're just gonna feed this cable down through the dash on the other side and we're pretty much done. But that's another reason why I don't like ELDs. Just use paper. There's the hole. We had to drill it that way because this guy otherwise would not fit. So. Mm, I think that's still too much. I don't think we need to put this in our lap or anything ever, so. Well, in case a DOT officer wants to see it, you're supposed to be able to hand it to him. Oh. But I think if he comes over to this side, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, just make sure it comes where he can come on the passenger side. butt but it goes in there and then these sit in here like so I'm just waiting for that to click these cables are really stupidly sensitive so you got to be really careful because they break very easily I've had them break very easily but I should be okay with it being sandwiched by this guy Oh no, it feels like we've been doing this before. I know, <laughs> except these are coming off a lot easier. No, we didn't quit. Um, funny story, their logo is exactly the same color as their truck. So The the A. Yeah, the a. So it looks the like we're, work, we're working for sieves. Yeah. Sieve. Look at that. Yeah. It's, it's basically like the same, the same it just color. disappears. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and get signs made here in town by the company that did signs for us when we went to Gonterra. We can't say their company name. And we're just gonna stick those on and it's just gonna make it look better. All right, I'm just not happy right now. The hood got caught and it scraped all the paint off. Got caught behind this panel. Ugh, that sucks. This here, 2009 W900L, Kenworth W900L, is a fine specimen of a truck. But yeah, it's 09, has 1,022,000 miles on it. Hey, that ain't no cat under the hood. 
No, but it's recently had one. It's a CM871 dual overhead cam Cummins ISX 2009. Um, set to 475 horsepower, 1850 foot pounds of torque. And yes, it is governed at. It is governed at 99 miles per, miles hour. per hour. Oh, yeah. And since we're in California, it's still emissions intact. All right. Or is that, oh no. Uh, it has 355 rear ends on 40,000 pound axles and it's sitting on Kenworth Air Glide 380 four bag suspension, which is basically a peak flex air. Holland fifth wheel. We actually bought this fifth wheel almost new from a guy in Bakersfield. He got a good deal on it. It came off of a fire truck. It's literally never been used. Um, this truck actually had a tall fifth wheel on it set up for tanks at risers. And it would have been too tall for any kind of other trailer. Well box trailer it would have put us at like 13 8 13 9 for height because it was about 53 to 54 inches tall from the ground to the top of the plate so with this fifth wheel right at 46 and a half inches which works out for dry van 24 5 low pro steer tires the rears are 11 r 24 5 stand-ups so they're taller than the steers we bought this truck, it had, 20, it had all these all the way around. We switched them on the front because these are kind of like an all position tire and it had them in the front. It, was, it had a pretty bad shimmy. They're actually right behind Alice there. And we were gonna switch to 24.5 low pros. Right now we have 11 R24.5s on the back because eventually we're gonna switch to 24.5 low pros in the back, but these are almost brand new. So we're just gonna run them out. But there's also a benefit to this. Being that this truck has 355 gears with these tires, it makes it seem like it has 336 gears. So we have 120 gallon fuel tanks, your standard size. Um, truck gets about 6.3 to 6.7, with those driving almost 70 miles an hour. So it's got a good range. We can go about 1,200 miles almost on it uh, without really worrying about getting fuel. This fine specimen is a manual transmission. It is a Eaton Fuller RTLO 18913A, meaning it's 1850 pound capacity, 13 speed, single overdrive. The truck has a VIT interior, has dual bunks, it has a refrigerator, it has the smart wheel, which I'm not necessarily a fan of, but it's here, so we're gonna make do with it. Um, and I lied to you guys. The truck actually has a million twenty-three thousand miles. There's proof. There's proof. So the truck's got a standard uh, gauge package. I added these. This is your boost gauge. This is a pyro gauge. It's not literally tapped inside the manifold. It is just basically um, clamped. The probe is clamped to the manifold because with these engines you get better fuel mileage if you kind of drive it by heat soak. So I just and it kind of I can tell when the truck does a regen so that's what it's there for boost gauge reference you know if you're down on power you can kind of troubleshoot here and there so for people that don't drive trucks we're gonna go through what the gauges are for or for people that have trucks that don't have gauges yeah that too so starting with this one here that's your oil temperature that's the actual oil temperature inside the oil pan this is your oil pressure self-explanatory this is your volt gauge. Yes, it's low right now because the engine's not running. Usually it's about right there. This is your water, AKA coolant temperature. This one, this is your RPMs, engine revolutions. Also knows a tachometer. Tachometer, <laughs> obviously speedometer. So this gauge here is a primary, primary air pressure gauge secondary air pressure gauge this one is what your transmission and all that accessories run off of this is what your brakes really run off of and the red lights are on because i have an airbag that's slightly leaking somewhere so when the truck sits for a while it'll drop some air which we're going to replace here fuel gauge self-explanatory this is your brake apply gauge see it shows you how much brakes you're applying how much air you're applying to the brakes turbo boost pressure Exhaust temperature, AKA parameter, front drive axle, front differential, oil temperature, gear loop temperature, rear differential, 
temperature, gear loop temperature, train, uh, suspension load. So it tells you how much air pressure is on the bags. It's reading zero right now because the bags are empty, but it will read about on the very first notch when you don't have a trailer on it. And on the Kenworth, it's right about 60. PSI is where you're probably about maxed out at 34,000 pounds on your drives, but you know, it gives you a good perspective of where you're at weight wise when you get loaded if you're somewhere in the boonies where you don't have a scale. That's good to know. This is your transmission temperature, oil temperature. So very all very important gauges. Usually on Kenworths, there's four more over here if you full spec them with full gauges, but this one didn't come with them. So it this is the bare bone well it's not the bare bones but this is like the bare necessities that you'd want in a truck a lot of trucks don't come with these gauges anymore especially your temperature gauges for your transmission and your differentials i feel that those are crucial especially for us out west with a lot of mountains and with all the heat that we have to endure so headlights you know running lights parking lights marker lights kenworth stuff so we have the smart wheel on this truck which I'm not necessarily fond of, but this generation of smart wheels is a lot better than the old ones that I used to have that were pretty 80s looking. This is like your marker interrupt if somebody flashes you over to thank you. Um, these are your engine brake controls, which I wish they were in the dash, but they're in here. First stage, second stage, put you through the windshield on an ISX stage, third stage. So on the other side, headlights, if you somebody passes you, you can flash them. Cruise control, you know on off set resume and that's pretty much self-explanatory you got a city horn here so here's our air horn okay. so this is your interior dome light and floor light for the kenworths it's a two position switch this is your engine fan a lot of these newer trucks do not have this um, pack our trucks like kenworth and peterbilt they do freightliners and volvos do not have this this is a must have in my opinion if you're an owner operator and you run in a hot west coast weather and you're pulling a lot of grades because you can turn that on before a long grade and it'll keep you cool this guy here is if you want to initiate a park regen spare switch pto switch if you have a pto we don't have a pto this truck actually used to have a pto spare switch four ways another spare switch traction control which i don't know if this truck actually this traction control works on it down here you have your hvac recirculate ac sleeper control this guy right here, which is hard to see because it's black on pack cars. Peterbilt's are somewhere else, but on Kenworths it's down here. It's for your dash display, which is up there. To show you if you want to go through the screen. Air suspension dump, fifth wheel slide, power divider lock. Parking brake for the truck, trailer air supply. Well, that's pretty much it for a truck. Oh my God, are you LD or me? Look at this fancy thing. This is our ELD, which we're running for our current company. It is a Qualcomm Omnitrax IVG unit, which I'm very familiar with, so I don't really, I, I don't mind it, I guess. It's okay. It frees up the phone. Speaking of phones, I have my handy dandy phone mount. It's magnetic, and I know you guys don't like it. When I was going through my phone because we were getting screwed over on our eight, so we got this guy, and I can just use one finger if I need to communicate, if I need to make a phone call. So that's very handy to have. What's that device? It's a CB radio, AKA 1980s talking machine. What do you do with that? You take, get on this here microphone and you go breaker, breaker, and you communicate with other truckers. Yes, it's a Cobra 29 LTD. It's newer, newer style. Um, if you guys ever want to holler at us and you're in California and we're running up and down north south, we're going to be on channel 17, which is why it's on 17. And if we're going across 80, obviously we'll be on channel 19. We'd love it if you guys would holler at us. Yeah, holler. It's kind of a lost, uh, lost art here with these CD radios. Nobody really talks on them anymore. So the truck has a million twenty-three thousand on it. Um, bottom end, cylinder head has never been touched. It's actually in pretty good shape i'm surprised um no rods and mains have ever been done on it either which for our cummins is a, it's a pretty good pretty good accomplishment i guess for any engine that being said but these isx's were known to need a little bit more tender loving care than other engines sooner than later because uh, it just make more power i guess than others um the only thing that's been done to it is the turbocharger has been replaced on it 
I want to say the maybe the AGR cooler stuff like that I believe the radiator has been replaced on it little things here and there you know um, the transmission is is a Weller reman transmission and the clutch has been replaced uh, I see like all the air air uh, the chambers the air pods been replaced on the back um, other than that they just maintain the truck and they, they used it they, they drove it and they used it and that's what we're gonna intend to do with it we're gonna drive it and we're gonna use it and you know I'm not going to overhaul this truck. I'm going to drive it till it explodes or it starts having major issues so I can see how many miles I can get out of it. If it ever needs anything, it will either park it, whether it's at this house or if we leave this state, somewhere else, and I think I will throw an in-frame kit in it or I'll swing another engine in it. But to be honest with you, I probably won't shy away from these engines because I love the engine brake on it, I like the fuel mileage on it and the power, which is a great compromise. I used to be a cat guy through and through. When I met Alice, I had a thousand plus horsepower Kenworth with a C15 in it. Got Let's it. talk about that Kenworth for a second here. Just in case anyone's wondering, on our end screen, there's actually a picture of that Kenworth yes. with a crappily photoshopped picture of this Kenworth slapped on top of it. That was Martin's old truck. So that's the story behind our ending screen is that picture of Martin's old truck rolling coal, which obviously this truck does not do because it is California missions legal. So we just did a Photoshop hack jog and I love it. Actually, we didn't do it. A buddy of ours did it, but I loved it so much. It was like, this has to be on the channel. And that's kind of our signature ending. See that? I did that today. I'm so mad at myself. It's unbelievable how mad I am. The hood just moved over and closed inside the air cleaner. And I didn't realize it and I scraped the crap out of it. I'm so angry because this truck had perfect, dang near perfect paint. And now I'm just- I hear it's uh, expensive paint too. Yeah, it's a uh, Viper Red. I'm gonna, we're gonna have to get it fixed because I can't live with that. I don't think you can either. All right, so one of the most asked questions is, where did this truck come from and how much do we pay for it? So we bought this truck from a local propane hauling company in Vacaville, California. And the reason why we bought it, probably the main reason why we bought this truck, not only because it's a cool truck, but we paid $23,000 for it. So speaking of trucks, before we bought this one, we actually looked at other trucks. We looked at a green feeder built uh, SDP Caterpillar, which was carb compliant. Um, the guy never showed up though. He never, like we came there with intentions to like drive away and he never showed Facebook marketplace. Then we went to look at a white Peterbilt. It was in Reno, Nevada at a Peterbilt dealer. We went and test drove the truck and we actually have some footage of it. Insert here. <laughs> Let's see if we get to stop it. Of course, DPF fuel enable actuator. So now it's telling us the faults? Yeah. So it is emissions related. Needs deleted. EGR delta pressure, DPF fuel enable actuator. Um, the truck needed some work. It was a Packer engine truck, which we had full intentions on, you know, being mandating. But it had some major issues when we went to drive it. It actually shut down on us twice and we had to limp it back. And in the meantime, I actually found this truck sitting at a lot. And we, we couldn't drive it because I think it was a holiday. We went and looked at it and we kind of fell in love with it looking at it over the fence and, and here it is. So we went back the next day, we fired it up, test drove it, I did my usual checks and you know, other than the shaking the because the steer tires, the truck drove great. Um, we could make a deal because the guy that owned the lot was like MIA, he was nowhere to be found. So, you know, I take after my wife snooping. I actually was, when I was looking at the truck, I opened up the door right in this very spot where my inspection sticker is the man sticker was so his phone number and everything and this company name and i texted him just out of the blue just that night and we we paid him for it and then the next day we drove it home all right guys so lots of great name suggestions for this truck but we're actually going to go with a name suggestion that one of our viewers gave us which when i heard it i just knew that that had to be the name for this truck i agree yes so we are officially going to call this truck worth it you know get it kenworth Ken, worth, worth it. It was worth it. It is worth it. Sorry, Lisa, you were a close second, but. Yeah, man. I mean, maybe, maybe on K 
occasion we might have to refer to her as old Lisa Kelly here, but I really like that name too. But you know, just the, the play on the Kenworth name and having it be worth it. And because this whole thing that we're going through, we want it to be worth it. I think it speaks to the heart and it has special meaning. And that's what we're going to call this truck. Yep, I agree. It's a good name. So thank you to the viewer that suggested that. I'm so sorry. I don't remember your name. Um, I'm going to insert it though down here. And um, yeah, great suggestion. Love it, man. Thank you. Oh, and Adam, if you're watching, because I know you probably are, appreciate the firing, buddy. That was the best thing that you could have done for us. I'm so happy. I hope you are. I hope you're happy with your decision because I am a free man. I am a free man and so is my wife. She's a free woman and we get to make money for us now. Appreciate it, buddy. Have a good one. Thanks. You want to act like you're pointing it out again? Acting.